Hey lovelies, so in this video I'm going to show you how I created this lovely pink and white set. So as you can see I have already prepped and primed and applied my tips to this client. Um, I have used Pro Impressions Natural Competition tips. These are my favourites um, to use when doing pink and whites and I have also used Glitter Bell's Dehydrator and Acid Free Primer which is available from my website. Again all links will be down below as I say in every video. So I'm currently using um, the Glitter Bells Sugared Almond. Now you guys know this is my absolute favorite color pink powder. It's just so beautiful. It's so lovely to work with. And oh, I just, <laughs> I can't boast about it enough. I'm not gonna lie. So I'm also using my Glitter Bells Size 10 brush, which is unfortunately out of stock at the moment on the lovely Annabelle's website. Um, they do have some other brushes in, but just not this one. Um, I do leave the link down below to that as well, just in case you never know, they do get stuck in. It will be there for you to purchase. So I'm just tucking this bead into cuticle now and then sweeping over. I will explain on the um, next nail bit I do exactly what I'm doing, because obviously I have just babbled the whole way through that. So I'm just going to place another bead on now just to make sure that I've got a nice apex area and that my nail, well my nail bed area is completely straight. Again I will explain a little bit more in detail on the next nail bed that I do. So on the next finger this is going to be a French ombre. So I'm just applying a very small bead of clear over my tip area so where my tip meets the natural nail just because when you're blending your white back you don't want there to be that little ridge because you will see it so putting this little bead down will help uh, your blend seem seamless seem seamless <laughs> so yeah you won't see that harsh line so I'm just making sure it's nice and flush there's no lumps and bumps and you can see now from the side profile of that nail it is completely flat which is exactly what you want when doing doing any ombre really. So for the white, I'm going to be using Snowdrops White. Again, this is a Glitter Bells powder available from my website. So I'm just placing that on, pushing that out to side walls and then I'm flipping my brush around and then blending that back. So just feathering that product into the natural nail getting rid of any loose bits of glitter what decide to get stuck in there I swear to god this happens with every nail guys like every nail so i'm just walking the rest of this product down the nail now and you can see i left my bush floating in midair so i'm obviously having a chat with my client there so i'm just patting and pulling nice slow motions and then obviously my bead didn't reach so I am going to have to put a second bead on there. So I'm flipping my brush, placing that on the free edge area, pushing it out to side walls and then blending that in. Just using the belly of my brush now just to pat all that in place. Make sure it is nice and neat, we don't want too much product on there. Working nice and thin. And then because I've used sugared almond on my nail beds, I'm going to use the same cover powder on my ombre. Um, it's a nice one to use as well because it is such a soft pink, it does blend really well. So I'm just placing that on at the top of my blend, pushing out to side walls again, and then feathering that down, out to side wall, and then feathering down. Just making sure my side wall areas are nice and neat. And then I'm gonna place my second bead right next to the cuticle. So I'm going to pop it on and then push back and then you can see I'm pushing it very very close to that cuticle, pushing it out side walls and feathering down, pushing out side walls again and feathering down. You can see again I've got hardly any height with this nail because obviously it is going to be capped in clear. Just remember to work nice and thinly and just keep pulling that down until you're happy with your blend. So then I'm going to miss out the ring finger because it's just another nail bed and the view wasn't great. So I'm going to go on to the index finger. So I've picked up my sugared almonds, I've drained ever so slightly and I'm placing that on around the centre of the nail. 
And then I've got my brush at 45 degree angle and I'm pushing out to side walls at the same time as feathering in to the client's natural nail area. The most important thing is to get that feathering right and then move on to your smile line because your smile line can always be refined with your file. So once you're happy with your smile line, then you're going to place your second bead on and you're going to place that right at the cuticle. You're going to tease that back into cuticle. You're going to leave the bulk of your product where it is and you're going to just tease the front of the bead over your smile line area and then just going to use your brush, the tip of your brush to just neaten up that smile line and the belly of the brush just to pat it ever so slightly. So this is the point where you want to play with your smile line and get it as perfect as you can before the product sets. Again, you can always rectify with your file, but the better you get it with your brush, the less filing you have to do, which is always good. So then I'm going to go in with a fresh file. I always use a brand new file for my smile lines. So as I'm filing my smile line, it is important to remember that you are pushing against the acrylic. You are not pushing down onto the client's nail. So you're pushing against, not down. I am keeping my file nice and flat against the acrylic. So it's around a 90 degree angle. So you always want your file to be straight. And you can see that I'm using the full file as well. I'm not using the very tip of the file. I see a lot of people doing that. Use the full file. That is why it is that big. Don't just use half of it because before you know it, half the file is going to be blunt. So obviously I've missed out the middle finger again because I just thought I'd carry on showing the index finger because I've started with that one. So file's nice and flat against it. And you can see there I'm just refining everything, making sure it is nice and neat. Um, I will say YouTube videos are great and I have been asked a hell of a lot for this video. Um, but you just can't learn everything on a video. So you can see now I'm turning the client's hand um, to check my smile line areas and things like that. I can't show you what I'm checking for on a video. So I do a million percent recommend going on a acrylic skills course or private one-to-one -one training. Um, not even just with myself, obviously I do offer them courses, but there are other nail techs like all over the UK and indeed internationally who do these courses. So if you are struggling, please do book on one of them because the, the, the knowledge that you'll learn like on these courses is literally, it's amazing. So I definitely, definitely do recommend that. So now I've finished rambling on about that. I am capping in my ombre now. So you can just see I've used one bead of glass slippers from Glitter Bells, which is also available on my website. Again, links down below. Um, so I'm just neatening up my edge now, making sure that it is all nice and neat. Then I'm going to go on and do my white. The reason I did my clear first before my white is because sometimes white can make your monomer a little bit cloudy. Um, so I tend to do all my clear work or anything like that before I do use white, just in case I do get a bit lazy and contaminate it, my monomer. I know that it's not going to ruin my clear. So you can see that I've placed my bead on. I've pushed it right up the wings of both of the sides of the smile line making sure I've got it tucked right up there and then I'm using the belly of my brush just to pat the rest of the acrylic in place. Now I am going to have to do a second bead on um, on these uh, tip areas. I do tend to do it in one but I feel like whenever I'm filming or like I'm teaching or anything like that it always seems to be in two which is so frustrating. But the great thing about this powder is that you don't get the like shadowing. So with some white powders, I have found that I've got um, a shadowing line if I do more than one white bead. But um, touch wood, this is me tapping my head. Um, I haven't had that with the Glitter Bell Snow White, which is amazing. So I'm just adding a little bit more white to my free edge area, making sure that it is thick enough. Patting and then pushing it all into place. And then I'm going to do the same on the index finger. So you can see I've placed it on, pushing it up to side walls. I did work with this bead a little bit too soon. I should have left it a little bit longer. But I was just being impatient. And then you can see my model is starting to lift up her fingers. This is because she is having a look at them. We were discussing, obviously, how the white goes right over the pink. And clients who have never had pink and whites before see this part and they're like, 
oh my god what have you done so you can see she's just looking at them there as we're discussing it but luckily this client is a nail tech and she understands the process that when you obviously file them all in that crisp line comes back through because you've spent that time with your file perfecting your smile line so yeah she does block the view a little bit on this one but we can forgive her because she is a great client and nails look amazing on her so as if by youtube magic here is the finished set all filed and ready for top coat don't know about anybody else but that is my favorite part of doing a set of nails i love looking at that crispness so now i'm going to apply top coat you can see that i have applied some crystals to this nail um I will admit crystals are not my strong point. I love them, absolutely adore them, but I hate placing them. I really feel like I need to work on my crystal placement. So I have been, I've been trying, guys. I have been trying. My last few sets, I've had quite a few crystals on because I do want to up my crystal game. So I haven't really showed me applying them because, like I say, I'm not 100% comfortable with it. So I'm using the Jellica No Wipe Top Coat as always. This is a 60 second cure top coat and it is a really nice thick top coat. And oh, oh, we've got fluff. Oh my God. The bane of a nail tech's life is fluff. I don't usually have a towel on my desk. And obviously since going into the studio, I have got these obviously dusky pink towels. And I'm like, oh, they'll look lovely. But oh my God, the fluff is driving me insane. So I don't think the towels will be staying very long. <laughs> So the, again, this is the Jellica No Wipe Top Coat, 60 Second Cure, absolutely amazing. Clients love it. I've got to admit, it's selling like hotcakes on the website. I didn't realise how much you guys would love it. Um, it's a really good top coat. It's a nice thick top coat. So with some top coats, you have to apply them quite thinly because they're quite watery and they seem to fall you know, like into cuticle, whereas this one is really thick and it stays exactly where you put it. Like it is, oh, it is my favourite top coat. It has a little special place in my heart, this top coat does. I mean, you can see now before it's even cured, like how shiny it is. And it can cure in 30 seconds, obviously in LED, but I do cure for a minute just because I feel like it gives it that little bit of extra shine. I might be totally wrong. It might just be me and my little weird ways. But I do feel like you get a little bit more shine with curing it for 60 seconds. You can see that I have applied my crystals before as well. Some do after, but I do find applying them before. And I just use a little bit of NSI Polybond and my Crystal Katana to pick up. And then you can see when I'm top coating, I do sort of seal around the edges with the top coat, but never over the top. And then here is the finished set. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I do really appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe and do click that little bell and you will get notified for all my videos.